only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports... Even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by the conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family, your business can benefit from current events most of all. Thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. Just remember that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. Beautiful morning this morning, day after Mother's Day. What would we be celebrating today on this wonderful Morning, uh, let's see, National Dance Like a Chicken Day? Yeah, I don't know. Whoa, those guys are a little loud this morning, aren't they? Let's see if we can get their uh, volume turned down just a bit. There we go. We're also looking at Underground America Day. National Buttermilk Biscuit Day. We'll go with that one. I think uh, that might be the one that works. Looking forward to tomorrow when it is National Chocolate Chip Day. National Chocolate. I wonder if that's cookies or what that would be. National Chocolate Chip Day. That would be tomorrow. Let's look at the markets right now. See what the markets are doing for you as we continue to watch them each day. But it's been a, a seesaw in the markets when we've been looking at the the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We've been seeing it going fairly steadily up. What is causing that? Do you have any idea where we why that's happening? Well, one of the reasons that we continue to watch is even though MSNB hee haw doesn't tell us the truth, and they've been the anti-Trump network obviously watching their ratings dropping like a rock now that we have been seeing some success successes in the Trump administration. The Dow Jones Industrial Average right now up 128 points because there's just no real logic to some of the things we're seeing coming out of some of the news channels. They don't want to talk about the good stuff that's going on in our society, in our country, the geopolitical areas. Thought we were going to have a trade war, so the market went down, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now with what we're seeing in China, the, uh, working together. Thought that the president was going to get us into some sort of wars. That doesn't seem like that's happening. When we watch and see, well, look what happened over in North Korea. That seems like they're a little bit better off than where we were before. We saw they they said that when the president decided to, to follow through with the campaign promise and the congressional order of moving our embassy into Jerusalem, well, that was going to cause military conflicts in the Middle East. That has not happened either. In fact, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, both seem to be siding with the U.S. more and more, and siding with with. Israel, which is even more important, I mean, we've seen so many uh, battles out there, but now they're siding with Israel as well, so we're looking, watching that one for you. Gas prices, they're up, 71.13 a barrel for gas, 287.1 national average, 369 here in the state of confusion. We like to tax ourselves as much as possible. Last I looked, there was about, uh, let's see, three, six, seven, about eight states that are over a dollar, over three dollars a gallon. Maybe ten states over, over that three dollar a gallon mark. Two fifty six is the lowest price for gasoline in the country. That would be in Mississippi, the lowest price gas in the country. So at two eighty seven point one, that is the national average. Looking at the ten year Treasury, those people that are living on a fixed income, two ninety nine. We'll talk more about that. 
in a little bit uh, or in the next segment. We'll talk more about that U.S. 10-year Treasury. What does that mean to us? What does that mean to your finances? What else is in the news? Well, <laughs> uh, the Trump administration. I love watching some of the headlines that come across because every headline is the Trump, the Trump administration braces for criticism, dot, 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 right? doesn't matter what they do. The president could walk on water and they would say, well, that's because he can't swim, right? I mean, it's just amazing how many different areas that we continue to watch where the media looks for the negative in everything. Now, I'd love to see it where the media would, or the, the Senate, they could solve a lot of these problems if it wasn't uh, that Mitch McConnell is such a weak leader. Unbelievable how bad a leader he is. But they could really solve a lot of these problems real simple. I, I'm, Chuck Schumer wants to slow walk every appointment. Why don't they just uh, keep the Senate in session every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until they get the appointments done? Right? If, they, if the senators had to work on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, don't you think they would figure a way of getting these things done quicker? If they took their vacations away... Well, that would be almost every day, but if they take the vacation time away, they take their spring recess away. Do you know why the spring re or the summer recess actually came into effect way back when? Do you, do you know the history of that? Well, it's very simple. Back in the earliest days of Washington, D.C., the capital of the country, August was unbearably hot and humid. So the senators and the Congress people all left town and went on vacation for the month of August because it was too hot, too unbearable to stay there and work. Well, in recent modern times, they've come up with something called air conditioning. And they don't have to worry about that anymore. They don't have to worry about being unbearably hot in the capital. They've got modern, the modern uh, comforts of life. And they don't have to worry about those things. So why don't they just stay there and get their work done? They don't work that many days a, a year anyway. So why don't they stay there, get these things done? They want to have 30 hours of debate on every appointment? Fine, no problem. Work Saturday, work Sunday. Do you have to work Saturdays and Sundays? Just a question. I know most people uh, have to seem that they have to on some point or not have to work Saturdays and Sundays. Congress people, they just leave town. How does that work out? How's that working out for their boss? That would be you and me, right? I mean, we're the ones that are not getting these people in Congress getting doing their work. Let's get them out there working. Let's see what happens if they had to put in a full day's worth of work. I don't think they'd ever be able to handle that, but that's just the way it is once you're in, in the United States Congress. You get this, all that time off. Uh, unbelievable. See in a report now, the S&P 500 should be 1,000 points lower than it is today, according to one strategist. Really? wonder what his thinking is on that one. I'm going to suggest to you, and I'm going to talk to you in the next segment, about the, the, the misnomer. I think that we're going, to, we're, we're going to see in one of the next few months, it's not going to be very long, but we'll see a big spike up in the inflation rates that are being reported. I'm going to tell you exactly why that is next segment. But we're going to see that, that coming to pass. Good morning, Andy. Glad to see you here. Jim, good to see you. Mark, Arlene, glad to see you with us this morning. Just taking a look. If you're watching us, uh, go ahead and share your... Uh, give us a thumbs up right there on the Facebook feed. Joseph Mundo. Arn, Tony, glad to see all of you with us. Keith, good to see you with us as well. Checking out what's going on here. Uh, what else do we have in the news going on this morning? In the mortgage market, it's going to be a very fascinating story. And I'm gonna, again, like I said, I'm going to share with you next segment why it's fascinating. We're going to start seeing the home equity lines of credit. It's going to have some issues there. But I did listen to a, one of the weekend stories, one of the weekend radio broadcasts that wanted, they're in their first, oh, two minutes of their radio broadcasts on the weekends, on many of them. I wouldn't say all of them, but the biggest ones. They tell you in the first two minutes that we are going to mislead you through the broadcast. Listen to, the, listen to their opening uh, um, disclaimers. Right, This show was previously record, recorded, and then they start, go through the rest of the broadcast, the next 54 minutes, telling you that they're a live radio broadcast, telling you what's going on. Now, if they're going to lie to you about something that's that minute, what else are they misleading you on? Like maybe they have no mortgage insurance on any loan under 20%. Really? 
Well, we heard from Jim LeBay last week that maybe they're just paying for it without telling you, which means you're going to get a higher interest rate. Or maybe they are putting it into your closing disclosure and going to show it to you at the very end. But doesn't that mean, wouldn't you be re better off having that mortgage insurance? Because if you're paying mortgage insurance on a monthly basis, on a private mortgage insurance, that falls off or it can be requested to be removed when you hit the equity targets. But if it's built into your interest rate, they're going to keep hitting you for that until you get rid of that loan. Maybe 30 years. Are they telling you that information? Are they, are they sharing that with you? Are they telling you the options? Are they educating you? Or are they just trying to bait and switch, bring you in with some low teaser rate? I heard that one on one of the shows this weekend also. Your payment rate, that's a new, new term, payment rate on a 15-year loan. Now, I know that there's some radio broadcasters out there that promote 15-year loans. That might be well and good if you live in Tennessee, but if you're living in Southern California, a 15-year loan means you're going to only be able to afford probably 60% of the house that you could get if you're using a 30-year loan. And if you want to use real estate as an investment tool, you might be locking yourself out of the market by using a 15-year loan. Now, if you want to pay off your 30-year mortgage in 15 years, hey, I have no problem with that. It's not a great investment for you, but do it if that's what makes you feel comfortable. But don't lock yourself into it because then if you go to buy another house, if you want to move up, think about this. You buy a, a starter home using a 15-year loan and you find out that, you know something, I want to get in a bigger house. I've got a windfall of money. I've got a bonus at work or something along those lines. I can come up with the 5% down payment, 3% down payment, whatever it might be to buy a new house. But you go and you don't qualify because you've got that 15-year albatross around your neck and you don't qualify for the new loan. Well, keep that as a 30-year loan, and then you can keep that first property by a second property. The first property continues to appreciate 5 6 7% here in Southern California. It's historic numbers. We can't say what it's going to be in the future. But think about that part of it, and then buy that new house with 5%, 10%, 3% down, whatever you need to do. And now you've got two pieces of property that are continuing to appreciate. Now, does real estate go down? Certainly. Every investment goes down. But over the long run, over, the, over a 42-year history, we're looking at 3 to 5% appreciation annually. I'll have that number for you when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. Home ownership, a man is not complete unless he owns a house. That is the quote. We'll talk about that top best real estate tops best investment poll for the fifth year in a row it just keeps on going people know that real estate is a great investment so they continue to push that one things to do if debt if you have a debt that goes into collections we'll talk about that as well and what do you need to know about 529 plans have you ever heard of a 529 plan a lot of people are using them what do you know about them? Are you using them the right way? Are they hindering you? Right? We had Chris Bissonette here last week talking about the 529 plan and what happened with it. So we'll look at that one as well. Remember, you can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Radio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? 
How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Good morning, Josh. How is Minneapolis doing today? Glad to see you with us. Gene, glad to see you. We got to get you to come back in and chat about how your business is growing. Love watching the entrepreneurial spirit just continue to grow. Gene's a great example of that. Got to see that one. Samir, good to see you there. Andy, glad you're with us as well. Jim, glad to see you too. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Gold Star has the programs, the products for you. They're the only one I know of that has the Fast Pass loan approval, saving you potentially, I don't know all the numbers, we can't always be 100% certain, but somewhere between 10 and $50,000 on the purchase of your new home. Get that Fast Pass loan approval today from our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. So what is happening in the mortgage world? We're going to chat about that right here, right now. So we did look and see. I always watch this one for you. The 10-year treasury trading right now. Well, well, let me get the the live rate on that 10-year treasury. It's been hovering right around 3%. What does that mean to you? What is that deal? 2992 is where we are at right now. It's up about two basis points. That'll be two one hundredths of a point. That is what 2.992 really means to you. 2.992. What does that mean? What is it doing? And where is it going from there? The Fannie Mae 30 year bond down nine basis points, which means interest rates are the 30 year rate is up this morning. And we can still see that hovering and, and floating. A lot of space between the overhead resistance and the support on the downside. So we've got support at 101.50. We've got resistance. The first level is at 101.88. Now, when talking about the bond price, whenever you talk about bond prices, interest moves the other way. So if the bond price goes down, interest goes up. If the bond price goes up, interest goes down. 
But what's, we, we need to look at this more closely to find out why these things are happening. And part of it really has to do with a little bit of uh, what might be a misconception of what's happening in the market right now. Because we're talking about, and we, I've shared this with you before, that the Federal Reserve is talking about increasing interest rates several more times this year. But they may be missing something because I'm looking at the year-over-year -year consumer price index. And that is one of the big indicators of where we're heading. And Loretta Meister, been a hawk on interest rates, says thinks that we're going to see more rate hikes than the market may be expecting and it could be because one of the items that she cited was inflation. So let's look at where inflation comes from. And one of the biggest components of inflation is housing. Now, housing accounts for 41.8% of the consumer price index. But let's look at that even further because they're saying that it was up 2.99% on a year-over-year -year basis for April. 2.99%. But... What do we look at further in there is that rental rates, obviously rent is part of housing, rent rates are up about 3.7%, but the whole number is only 2.99. So if that's the case, that means that, that and, that's, and there's about 30% of the people rent, right? I mean, we already know that because we can look at the charts that show us the amount of home ownership. Right, the, the percentage of home ownership in this country. So when we look at that, we're looking at about 30% of the people are renters. Rent is up 3.7%. Total housing up 2.99%. That means that we would have to be under that 2.99% in the home appreciation numbers. Well, is that the case? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that we've been looking at those numbers. We look at those numbers for you all the time. That no, the home appreciation numbers are not under that 3% number. So then, what do we do? Where does that number come in? Well, let's, let's take a look at that a little bit further. Because I think I've got the chart right here as to where we're looking at the home appreciation, because we look at that on a regular basis from you. We know that there's not much supply left. The annual year-over-year -year percentage change in the U.S. is 6.7%, according to CoreLogic. So if, interest, if rental rates are up 3.7, property values are up 6.7, mortgage rates are up, then how can we only be looking at the biggest, the largest component of inflation being only at a 2.99% factor. Hmm. Then we look at energy, which also has some, some relation to housing. That's up 7.87%. So when we look at these numbers and you break down the largest components of the consumer price index, you have to start scratching your head and saying something doesn't make sense, something's going to give. Well, what's going to give? Well, the numbers might not be all-inclusive. They may be lagging a little bit. So we might start saying, okay, well, we might have to look a little closer. And what does it mean for the market if interest rate, if, if the inflation starts to heat up too much? Well, then the Federal Reserve gets active and starts increasing their, 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 their interest rates at a pace quicker than what they had originally anticipated. Just a thought for you to con consider as we look forward into what's going on in the markets. When we start talking about getting great advice, now do you think you're gonna hear that from any of the online services that you do talk to or that you get your mortgage information from? They might talk to you about how they can help you closing. Now what, what does that mean for you though? Well, if you're looking at the difference between buying a new house with mortgage insurance or buying a new house with a home equity line of credit, well, the answer to that question is maybe you're better off using the mortgage insurance because the home equity line of credit might be jumping up a little bit quicker. Now, there are reasons, there are areas where that makes sense. We've been talking about this right along that our friends over at Gold Star, 5% down payment on a purchase up to $1.2 million, no mortgage insurance. $1.2 million purchase, 5% down, no mortgage insurance. 
So think about that concept. Now you have to qualify for it. It's not for everybody. But if you fit into that category, if you fit into that criteria, it might be a benefit for you to continue to look at but only if you've got an educated person saying, this is what you need to watch out for as you move forward in this purchase. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio. That was a Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, t- real estate tops the best investment poll for the fifth year. Five things you can't take with you after selling your house. And one of them that could be a little bit of a question mark. So you need to look at that one. You need to understand it as well. Student loan crisis, worse than you think. Think. And things to know about the 529 plan. All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter, or at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, text NEST, 
NEST to 79564. NEST, NEST to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. Found this a fascinating article. I thought I would uh, bring it up and share it with you. It all has to do with home ownership. And the quote is, a man is not complete a complete man unless he owns a house, unquote. That was a famous quote by Walt Whitman. And it can be used to describe home ownership in America today. The census revealed that the percentage of homeowners in America has been steadily climbing back up since hitting a 50-year low in 2016. The home ownership rate in the first quarter of 2018 was 64.2% higher than last year's 63.6%. Shared a chart out there on our social media channels earlier today. Chief economist Dr. Ralph McLaughlin in his View blog gave these new home ownership numbers some context. Quote, the trend is clear. The home ownership rate has been ticking up for five consecutive quarters, and the number of new renter households has fallen for four consecutive quarters. Owner-occupied households grew by 1.345 million from a year ago, while the number of renters actually fell by 286,000 households. The fact that we now have four consecutive quarters where owner households increased while renter households fell is a strong sign households are making a switch from renting to buying. This is a trend that multifamily builders, investors, and landlords should take note of, unquote. In a separate article comparing the rental population in America to the homeowner population, Realtor.com also concluded that the gap is now shrinking. Again, I quote, The U.S. added 1.3 million owner households over the last year and lost 286,000 renter households. The fourth consecutive quarter in which the number of renter households declined from the same quarter a year earlier. That could pose challenges for apartment landlords who are bracing this year for one of the largest infusions of new rental supply in three decades. America's belief in home ownership was also evidence in a survey conducted by Pew Research. They asked consumers how important is home ownership to achieving the American dream. And the results, wait a second, I think I've got to get my friend, whoops, I think we lost him, oh well. The results are are pretty much what we would, would normally expect, right? It, when I talk about this on radio all the time, we're constantly looking at 43% said home ownership was essential to the American dream. 48% said home ownership was important to the American dream. And only 9% said it was not important. Bottom line, home ownership has been, is, and always will be a crucial part of the American dream. And we've, we've talked about this many, many times. Whether it be for the, the purchase side for your, for your personal residence, or if you're looking at it from an investment side. For every, every year, Gallup surveys Americans to determine their choice for the best long-term investment. Residents are given a choice between real estate, stocks, mutual funds, gold, savings accounts, CDs, or bonds. For the fifth year in a row, real estate has come out on top as the best Long-term investment. This year's results showed that 34% of Americans chose real estate, followed by stocks at 26%. And I shared again the chart on this one as well. Part of it has to do with the return on investment on real estate, the return on your cash invested in real estate, is significantly higher than every other just because real estate is one of the few, because of it being a a tangible item, it has a very, very high rate of, of leverage. So when you look at real estate going up, and I think I shared with you in the earlier segment that we've been, what we've been looking at as far as the, re, the return year over year on the real estate, right, is being 8.4% year over year in California. Those are some very significant numbers. When you look at 8.4% now, let's think if we we did a 10% down because it's, it's I use that number because I'm a simple guy and it's easy. That ends up giving you a, an 84% return on your cash. So your cash is almost doubling on a regular basis. Now you're not going to get that anywhere else. That's why we look at it and people that understand these issues are consistently saying that 
why aren't we doing this more and more? Why isn't this the area that we're really looking into investing? The, the, we're starting to see now more coming back. If you remember right after the downturn, the fix and flip market was a big item right after the, the, the downturn in our, in our economy. Right, but what's been happening in that area? Well, when we started seeing that the, the market was, there's no properties available, well, you don't have a lot of distressed properties. You can't worry, you can't deal with it. But when you start seeing that we're not in that world anymore, we're not, we don't have a lot of the distress, now there's just certain ones and people are looking and saying, you know something, I want some of these properties. And you look at Orange County, I told you I was gonna tell you what the history is for Orange County. We're looking at Orange County, California on a 43-year basis. The median home price is up at 813000 almost $814,000. And the 43-year his- historical appreciation, 5.08%. 5.08 is the historical number in Orange County, California. Now, you think about that number and start saying, okay, well, now if we stay, so let's still stick with a 10% down payment. Right, a 5.08%, you're getting a 50% return on your cash. Put $25,000 down, you're going to have, it's, that, that, it's going to be valued at 37500 roughly, if history repeats itself. Again, I say that because we never know, right? We never know if history is going to repeat itself. So we can't predict. You know, we can't guarantee something like that. But when you start looking at a history of 43 years, that's pretty much telling you that there's something going on here that we should understand, that we should be looking at, that we can pay attention to. And again, will it happen this year? No. But it's long term. That What we're looking at when we're talking about a lot of investments, I'm not a... a, a um, uh, my world is not really that of... Trading, right? I mean, I used to do trading a lot, but that's really not the world that we're in today. So if you are a trader, if you're looking as being a trade a trade individual, okay, you know, like you go and buy a stock in the morning, sell it in the afternoon, that's not real estate. That's not investing. What I'm looking at is the investment portion of this, and that's where you're looking at a huge difference. Now, let's look at Riverside. What are the numbers in Riverside for the same kind of an area if we look at Riverside County, we can look and say, okay, well, 4.04% is the average return on real estate investing over 43 years. So just draw a straight line from 43 years ago to today, 4.04%, 397,660 is the median home price for real estate in Riverside County. Now I know there's certain pockets of Riverside that are going to be more, certain pockets are going to be less. But you use a, we, all we can do is we can use counties, we can use certain areas as far as w- what's available. Why is that happening? Well, the year-over-year inventory in Riverside County is down 8%. Home affordability is still very good, but if you don't have any properties available, that's going to continue. We're watching in, in, uh, unemployment rate in Riverside, 4.64%. The median household income is ten thousand dollars more than the national average, right? Median household income nationally fifty two seven two seven. The median household income in Riverside sixty two thousand. So you're higher than the norms. That's why you're seeing some of these numbers going the way they are. They're they're showing that we should be investing in real estate. It's a great investment long term, and and more of the reports are coming back saying that that's what we need to be looking at, that the real estate is a good investment. It has recovered, and people look at it as stable. They can touch it. Now, one of the other op- issues that I, I've been th- contemplating as I've been looking, and I've been selling a, some, some uh, of our own portfolio of properties recently. Again, it's a great time to be in the market as, as a seller's market. So what are the things you can and cannot take after selling a home? If you didn't specifically tell the buyer you're packing up the chandelier for your new home, they're expecting to keep it because it is attached. That's a big issue. When I first, uh, one of the issues that we, we look at all the time, the idea here is if it's nailed down, bolted, or mounted, it probably stays behind. Well, 
what about if you've got a TV that's mounted on the wall? Probably a good idea. That's a real gray area. The TV may not be staying with the property, but what about the mounting mechanism? Because that's what's attached. So that's technically supposed to stay with the house. But if you have a $3,000 TV hanging on the wall, unless they're including the TV with the house, the mounting mechanism may not stay. You should probably make sure that you point that out in the documentation, in the purchase agreement, what is staying, what is not staying. Unless the property listing specifically mentions that you intend to take the prized rose patch that you were given, sellers cannot remove any landscaping. I've seen sellers with specific requests to take certain things that might have been a special gift. Otherwise, you just can't dig up a plant and take it with you. It's part of the property. Hands off anything anchored in the ground. So if you've got a basketball hoop that's anchored, stays with the property. If you've got the basketball hoop that's just on, on the roller stand, you can take that one with you. Lighting fixtures, if you're attached to, to specific lighting fixtures, a chandelier, if you're planning on taking it with you, make sure it's written up in the purchase contract. Otherwise, it's attached. It stays. And window treatments, they stay too. You may have spent a fortune on custom blinds in your living room, but they're attached. They stay with the property, again, unless you have it written specifically in the contract. Don't be petty or you might mess up the sale. Often the littlest things cause the most heated debates. That's one of the reasons why I'm a big proponent of aggressively pricing your property. Aggressively. right? If, if, if the property is worth 100000 Price it at 90000 95000 Get it priced aggressively. That way the, set, the buyers are competing against one another and you're just standing there on the sidelines watching them argue with each other. When they're arguing with each other, they're not arguing with you. They're not negotiating with you. And if they come up with something that you don't like, if you don't like the idea of one of the items that they want included, you just say, you know something, I, I understand your situation. I think maybe we should just cancel this contract. Let me go to the next buyer. Watch how quickly the story changes with many, many buyers because they're out there and they're losing out on some of the purchases that they want because it's such a competitive market. So you let them start bidding against themselves you're in the driver's seat. That's why I like aggressively pricing your properties. Yeah, properties are going to always, always sell at market price. If they're marketed, if they're out there on the MLS, and I, can, I, I have access to every buyer in the marketplace, right? We're on radio every day. I have access to, probably I shouldn't say every, probably 95% of the buyers in the marketplace, I have access to them. You want to sell a property quickly, you let us know and I'll put you in touch with some of the real estate professionals that we work with and price your property, property aggressively and watch that property get into a bidding war just because of all the buyers that we have access to through Ron Siegel Radio and you are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, that 529 plan things you need to know about it. We're going to also talk about things to do if your debt goes to collections, all that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. 
Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and one eight six six. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or any time at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report, it is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has these solutions for you. You just need to get on there and go to the website, CreditSanitizer.com. Get in there and... And get on their weekly mailing list. Get an email from them every week to find out what's going on and what you can do to help your credit scores. Ten things to know if your debt goes into collection is the topic today. For one reason or another, life has given you lemons. You're in serious debt. Now it's time to make lemonade. The best thing to do with facing collections is do a little proactive, focused legwork. Collections can be scary, but don't panic. Follow these tips to prevent serious credit or financial damage as a result of debt collections. Number one, review the debt. Don't accept collections at face value. These agencies are not infallible. In fact, I think many of them are quite the contrary. They have made errors in the past. Sometimes they're not legitimate errors. They just are trying to get your money. Review your debt amount. Cross-reference how much the collections agency is reporting. And look for discrepancies. You have 30 days to verify a debt after a collection agency has contacted you. Take this time to ensure all debt information is accurate. While reviewing the debt, be on the lookout for unusual, inaccurate, or unfair items. This is not the time to be sheepish. When you dispute items, the burden of proof is put on the collection agency. This means there really is nothing to lose. Worst case scenario, the dispute isn't approved and you're right back where you started. Know your rights. While it's true that loan delinquency got you in collections in the first place, that doesn't mean you forfeit your consumer rights. Review the Fair Debt Collections Act. If you want to give me a call at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. I will put you in touch in getting that. 
with that Fair Debt Collections Act protects you against harassment, threats, and regulates when collections is allowed to call you. Knowing your rights is a fundamental way of maintaining control when faced with collections. Consider payment options due to the extreme scrutiny of your situation. It may not feel like you have many options, but in reality you do. Your knee-jerk reaction might be to throw as much money at debt as you can, but fight that urge. Try not to sacrifice life's necessities to pay down debt. If you're like most people, you probably can't pay the debt in full. So set up a budget, establish a repayment plan, and stick to it. Next, negotiate. Many think that collections are set in stone, but actually you have more choices than you might think. While it's not a guaranteed success, negotiation is an option. Whether you're appealing to the creditor or collection agency, outlining hardship, mistakes, or extenuating circumstances can help reduce debt amount or at the very least extend your payment deadline. Understand the statute of limitations. Believe it or not, it is possible for debt to expire. The statutes of limitations for debt vary from state to state, and it's your job to get to know them. This is important not only to better understand the shelf life of your debt, but also to prevent inadvertently resetting the collections clock. There are many mistakes you can make which will prolong the debt. Sometimes it's as simple as merely talking to a collection agent. Know the laws to avoid inadvertently extending your debt commitment. And get to know the timeline after the debt has gone through collections. It will remain on your credit report for seven years. This can be misleading. It's seven years after delinquency, not from the date that you opened the account. This negative credit item can mark your score for a long time, but there are ways to soften the blow. For example, while collections do not disappear from a credit report after payment, a paid debt is viewed far more favorably than an unpaid one. And know the consequences. If worse comes to worse and debt goes unpaid far too long, the collections agencies may try to sue you. At this point, the best thing you can do is remain resolute and try not to buckle under the scrutiny of legal action. If you're called to court, make sure you show up or else an uncontended judgment will be made against you. If you fail to attempt any sort of repayment, your wages might be garnished or your bank account can be frozen. That can only be done through the courts. Again, I'm not giving you legal advice, but check with a lawyer. Christine Kingston can help you. Reevaluate budget if the debt has reached the collection stage. It's safe to say that budgeting needs to become a priority. Your current lifestyle has to lead to serious has led to serious debt, and it's clearly unsustainable. Maybe this was brought on by economic hardship or mere carelessness. But either way, a change must be made. Start by making a budget, consolidating credit cards, cutting out unnecessary expenses, and focus on paying down debt. This will be a long process, and nothing will change overnight, but you have to start somewhere and just breathe. When you receive threatening calls or letters, it's hard to keep cool. Just remember you're not alone. The sky isn't falling, but take this as a sign that it's time to get your finances back on track. Maybe it's time to evaluate your spending habits, do some budgeting, or seek out credit repair. If you're concerned about your credit, you can check your three credit reports for free once a year to track your credit more regularly. Go to free, free, myannualcreditreport.com. You can go to each of the bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. They have methods for you to check as well. One in five Americans are shocked to find errors on their reports. Maybe it's only because one in five Americans are the only ones that ever look. Every report I've ever seen has errors on them, and 79% of consumers who disputed credit report errors were successful in having them removed, 79%. And again, I can put you in touch with Alan Hayon. He can help you with that part of it. That is the Your Credit Matters segment, again, brought to you by creditsanitizer.com. So we're chatting a little bit today about student loans. We talked about that last week with Chris Bissonette, 123 College was here. Student loan crisis worse than you think as young people take steps towards their future and eagerly prepare to enter the world of higher education. Now faced with a seemingly inevitable notion of graduating with at least some student loan debt, it does not have to be that way. Again, we chatted with uh, Chris about this. One of the big items 
is the understanding the 529 plan. That may not be in your best interest. I was watching one of the news channels this morning, and they're talking about this quote-unquote legendary investor. He runs tons and tons of commercials on one of the business stations. But he says he'd never do an annuity. Well, I'm not going to say that annuities are great for everybody. I don't think any investment vehicle is great for anybody. I also don't think that any investment vehicle is bad for everybody. There are good and bad of everything. And the annuity is one tool that's used frequently to help with your student loan, the economic family contribution. Now, maybe this legendary, supposedly legendary investor doesn't understand that. Maybe that's why he talks about that he would never get caught dead using an annuity. Maybe it's just because he doesn't know what he's doing. You need to talk to somebody who can help with that, and there might be a big benefit to using the annuity in certain instances to help you minimize your economic family contribution, maximize the, uh, econo- the, the funding that you can get from various sources because you've minimized that economic family contribution, then you get all that money from the annuity right back. So you pay a little bit, get a lot. That's another return on investment, arbitrage. And as I say all the time, if you want more information on this, Chris, I think, is going to come back and chat a little bit more with us about some of these items from the college planning concept. Set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsiegelradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We're going to be back tomorrow, but remember this one. Make a lot of money. Help a lot of people. Have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Oh, I beg, I beg him, please.